What's going on world? Brand new episode of Royal Key there on your screen. I'm your host, George Kill, and I'm here in Morgantown, West Virginia with my guy, Clay. Clay, what's going on? Man? How we doing? Welcome, welcome. Thank you, man. Almost heaven, right? Is that what they call? West Morgantown. Virginia, let's go. Awesome, awesome. So this is uh, an amazing intro to a facility. Hall of Traditions, right? Yes, sir, yeah. This is your first impression when you walk in. All of the great players, the great moments we want to showcase and just give you a little taste as you come in through the building. So our timeline of great moments, great games, great players, records broken. This is definitely a place that you can come back and touch and, and jump into that moment right there. Probably my favorite was the Louisville game in 2005. I was a little kid growing up in Louisville, Kentucky, um, and I saw West Virginia, Pat White, Steve Slade, and all those guys playing. And I can jump in right here and see the highlights. Just an awesome game, three overtimes. So you're telling me every ball showcases a highlight up there? That's it, yeah. And you can come right down the line. So many cool moments. I mean, you look back at the tradition, the players that have been here, the Mark Bolgers, you've got Pac-Man Jones, you got those kind of players, and they were all just right in the middle of all these great moments here. Definitely. Now, as we kind of continue on the history of West Virginia football, um, you guys have another interactive display. You've got a huge database of former players that played here in our, our West Virginia Sports Hall of Fame. You got people like Bobby Bowden, right? You scroll through here, Mark Bolger, like I talked, about. I mean, just going in this year with Geno Smith, Stedman Bailey, Tavon Austin got inducted. So to get to honor them was really cool. Geno's balling right now in the league too. So now in the middle of this room, you guys have a lot of memorabilia. Yeah, I think it's cool because this, this room is open to the public all the time. And people are visiting from out of town, coming in on game day. This is open prior to the game so they can check all this memorabilia out. Uh, coach Nealon, legend here. His son is actually our equipment manager. We always make sure we get Coach Nealon back to practice and he's always hanging out. So cool to see him around all the time. But then the trophies, man, I mean, you talk about the Orange Bowl ups, I mean, just absolutely pummeling Clemson. You got the Fiesta Bowl upset against Oklahoma, the runaway beer truck everybody talks about. So getting to come in and just be close to those trophies, uh, pretty sweet deal. Okay, Jake, man, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. One thing that I really love about college athletic facilities across the country is them kind of showcasing their pipeline, right? We're standing in front of an NFL sign. I know you guys use that as a recruiting tool. Yep. What is the unique way you guys do that? Uh, so we kind of do that by having pictures of some of our premier guys on the wall here, and as well as putting the names underneath all the helmets. So every guy that's ever played for any of these teams, their name is underneath and what years they played for these teams here. Like Bruce Irvin, Dino Smith with the Seahawks, guys like Tavon Austin with the Cowboys. Those are kind of some big name guys that we have here. And then you have your special numbers here, which I'm sure changes like every season. In recent history, our first round picks are a big deal. Guys like Pac-Man Jones, Tavon, Bruce Irvin, like I said, those are some big name guys who made a big impact on the league. So this is our family wall. The state was built on coal miners. They built the state. That's really our foundation. Before they would go on their man trips, which was their trip down into the mine, the coal miners, they have a family wall. And that was to kind of remind them who they were doing it for, give them motivation as they go down in the mine. With a lot of these players, you ask them what their why is, like why do they play the game of football? It's their family. So this is kind of a reminder as they walk out to practice, as they walk out to games, as they walk into the facility, who they're doing it for, and just kind of give them extra motivation. And so now we're in our mud room, and this is kind of what keeps the locker room from smelling like a high school locker room, keeps it clean, keeps our main locker room clean. All right, Jake, this is a massive, like wide open locker room. What are some of the details, the specifics about this area here? If you look at the lockers, the guys kind of have their face, their number, where they're from on there. So it's kind of personalized, which you guys love. They got a wireless charger right beside them. Guys kind of love that, set their phone down before practice, going into meetings, so they're not bringing their phone with them. And they come back and their phone's already charging. There's a lot of storage. They have personalized lock boxes. The locker room as a whole has LED lighting. The lights kind of go with the speakers, so they go along with the beat of the music. So off to the side here, connected to the locker room is our NFL locker room. So when guys come back, they want to work out with Coach Mike, we kind of have like a separate space for them that they can work out, keep their stuff with personalized nameplates as well that we can replace as they come in and out. All right, Jake, we know like all young student athletes are like into the gear. You guys do something different here. Every school has this brand partnership, but you guys kind of take it a step further um, by adding some custom options as well. So we kind of like to give our guys these cleats 
and shoes, kind of reward them for working hard. We get them customly done. You guys get to pick what they get. And you guys also have like a great relationship with uh, Nike. Mm -hmm. uh, how many uniform combinations do you think you guys have? So we have three different helmets, four different jerseys, and four different colored pants. And we actually just did our Country Roads uniform so that we wore for the Pitt and Virginia Tech game. Now you just mentioned, a lot of people don't know about West Virginia, right? It's a, it's a small state, but what is the relationship here with the country song and everything having to do with John Denver? Yeah, so there's 1.8 million people in our state. That's who we play for. So after games, after wins, we stand out there on the field in front of the student section singing Country Roads by John Denver. I mean, it's really a moment that gives you chills. Like it's it's a powerful song. People in the state love it. And it's, it's really our song. That, and it feels great to get after a win. I definitely lean more towards curating like my specialty is West Virginia Vintage, mm -hmm. WVU Vintage, um, being from Morgantown. So I take a lot of pride in having like the best collection of vintage WVU pieces. Okay, like, so you say you got the best collection. Carry a lot of like band and music tees, okay. a good amount of like sports tees, like vintage Budweiser tees with like the frogs and lizards, those are always great. Oh. So as we make our way into the uh, player lounge, what do you guys use this awesome brandy for? So we use this for player photo shoots and recruiting photo shoots, whether it be official visits, media day shoots, type of stuff like that. You come in here at any time, guys are playing pool, playing ping pong, shooting on the basketball hoop. So they really uh, make good use of uh, this space. A lot of guys get their hair cut in here. I've got my hair cut in here a couple times. It's nice because it's right here. We talked about the art on the uh, custom footwear that you guys have, but there's art hints like all over this facility. There's some steps back here and it's really a beautiful mural. You guys can take pictures in front of. Definitely, definitely. And then the last but not least thing in this player lounge, the recording studio. Yeah, the guys kind of like to mess around, whether guys want to record podcasts or kind of rap on beats. So yeah. the, guys, the guys have fun with it. And kind of another thing that we have connected to the player's lounge is a sleep room in between practice, in between class. Whenever they get really a break, they can sit in these sleep pods, they can sit in the massage chairs and kind of just take some time away and get their mind right. Okay, Vince, uh, I've been in many training rooms across the country. Not one quite like this technology-wise. Uh, what makes this so technologically advanced than any other training room here? Um, I believe it's the stuff that, that we get access to through our administration and through football here and support to make sure we're giving our student athletes the best they have or the best that's available to not only you know help them when they are injured to come back on the field, but also prevent further injuries from happening. Because uh, I was always taught growing up, you know, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. So if we can prevent things from happening, it keeps our guys more successful on and off the field. What are some of the unique tech pieces that you guys have here? Um, kind of this area where we're even standing in, we use for biomechanical screening. This monitor on the wall here kind of makes the avatar, screens them in so we can look at joint angles and if they're shifting left or right when they squat, things like that. Um, we have a quick board to work on footwork. Um, we even have a scanner that takes a 3D impression of their feet to make sure they're wearing not only the right cleat, but the right size cleat. And it's got our whole Nike database in there. Um, we have what's called an Oxfit. It's got, it's a cable-based work workout equipment, um, but has force plates in it so we can see to make sure that guys are keeping their body weight even and we can add rehab programs to that as well. Right. So the focus is to keep them out of here, but when they are here, they are treated very, very greatly. Oh, right? uh, definitely. It's to make sure they, they have every tool that necessary to make them, you know, feel great today and they still feel great 10 years down the road as well. All right, so Clay, where are we now? All right, our meeting space here, you've got our position groups, our unit meeting rooms. We also have on the other side of this hallway is our coaches' offices. So kind of on one-stop shop, right? So the guys can get up here, watch tape, meet with the coaches, meet with the GAs, um, and really just dive into tape. And then it kind of leads into this area, which is I always like the theater room and every facility. Absolutely. I feel like we can just kick back and watch some Netflix or something. Right. But <laughs> no, the team room, great space. A lot, of, a lot of team rooms go deep. We want it to be wide so you're closer up here all together, right? Our guys are always connected and we're doing all sorts of things and bringing in speakers, um, former players to talk to them. So always a, a really used space here. One of every uh, college football's 
like crowning moment is having college game day come out. You guys have built like a shrine. Well, obviously that's everybody's favorite part of Saturday. I wake up every Saturday and watch game day. They've been here twice. What a crazy scene those were. Coach Corso and the gang and everybody. So, and Pat McAfee now on game day, one of our own. So pretty cool to have him a part of that and on set. So we wanted to make sure we had a little photo opportunity when people come in the building, they can throw on the headgear, throw on the helmet, right? So that's our space. All right, Clay, I already see some guys going hard getting some uh, extra work in. Always. What are some of the specs of the actual uh, weight room? What you can see right here behind us is only half of it. Underneath, we got all sorts of other equipment. Coach Joseph is bringing in the best of the best, right? So we've got everything from Pelotons to, to your normal, just old school, get after free weights, right? But everything is strategic that they do. Coach Joseph is one of the best in the country, if not the best, we're biased for sure. Um, he's been here, he's kind of the heart and soul of this program. So he, he takes the blue collar mentality directly and puts it into these guys while they're down here working out he does an unbelievable job with his group and so they're down there and they're always working there's no there's no messing around when you step into that weight room clay uh you're into social media right yes, that's sir. your department how do you find ways to capture like this experience like differently game by game. You're right, that's a huge part of it, taking the experience that's happening here and bringing it to our recruits, to our fans that can't make it into the games, right? So we love the atmosphere here. Like we show it off every chance we get. Every game's a little different. We've got uh, the gold rushes, you got the true blue game. So like it, we always try to mix it up and then step out in the stands, right? Like we wanna, we wanna showcase what it's like to be at a game here at Milan Pushkar Stadium. Right, right. Is there a favorite content piece that you have done uh, since being here? I really enjoy the man trip. Like that's really cool. When we walk in, touch the coal, the guys walk in, then they wave to the children's hospital across the street. I mean, that's just special every game. Um, and you just kind of feel the fans, right? So that's definitely a great way to kick off game day. Well, Clay, man, we appreciate you giving us a tour. West Virginia football, you guys have an amazing facility here, man. We love it. This is a place to be, a place where you belong, right? Almost seven.